Guess who's back? Back again. I've always had a thing for convertible laptops. My main device is a Minis Forum right here running Linux and with a detachable keyboard. But I also frequently use a Lenovo Duet 5, which a Twitter follower of mine suggested me to buy, so thank you so much. And that device shares the form factor, those with, though with a Chrome OS on it. Thus, I was pretty excited to be sent this, a Fight Tap Duo, which is also a two-in-one laptop tablet H thingy featuring Chrome OS a Chrome OS derivative called Fight OS. Thus, today I will go ahead and review the Fight Tab, but also give some impression and comparison with the other two devices that I have, since I've been using both for various months at this point. One key aspect of this, type of, uh, of this type of devices is the design. There is just one out there which I consider perfect and that, uh, that acts as a reference implementation for all laptop tablet hybrids and yes, it's the Surface Pro. So what should a device like this feature to be considered great? The Surface features a 3x2 OLED display with slim bezels and a 120Hz refresh rate, that's as good as it gets. The Duet 5 also features an OLED display and the cool bezels, but it does, not, it does use a standard 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which I will mostly forgive it since I use it as a media device, but the Fight Tab and the Minis for Minis Forum both share an LCD but 16 by 10 laptop with large bezels, which is a much more reason, reason which, are, which is a much, much more sensible aspect ratio. But I do see some room for improvements still. The Minis Forum display is 165 Hz, which is nice. Let's talk about the cover. The Surface has a detachable keyboard with a pen holder, and the top part folds to give you a slope on the keyboard, which is great. On top of that, the kickstand is integrated in the tablet itself, so it's always part of the device. Lovely. The Duet 5 has a pretty small keyboard, which does not fold, making it rather painful to type on. Instead, both the Fight Tab and the Minis Forum have folded keyboards with keys big enough for a good typing experience. However, the Minis Forum completely lacks any type of pen holder. The Duet 5 has one, but you have to 3D print it yourself, so thanks to my brother who did that. Whereas the Fight Tab has a piece of elastic on the keyboard, which works really well. Finally, all three share the same kickstand as its own magnetic component design for the back, which um, is fine, but I really hope that we'll move on from that ASAP. The Surface also comes with a fingerprint reader on the keyboard, uh, but both the Fight Up and the Minis Forum have their own fingerprint readers integrated in the power button. I haven't had much issues with either, and I feel like this is a great feature to have. Let's talk about connectivity. The Fight Tab comes with USB-C, an audio jack, a tray with an SD reader, and a SIM card holder. Please note that LT connectivity is a separate module that you have to build and install onto the buy and install onto the device yourself. Though this is the only device offering something like that, and I think it's a good idea for Fight not to make everyone pay for something that they might not need. The Minis Forum has two USB-C, an exposed SD card slot, full size by the way, an audio jack and another USB-C that only works as a video input. Yes, input. When this device is turned off, it actually behaves as a monitor and keyboard to anything that you connect to it. Pretty cool. The Duet 5 has two, two USB-C ports, one on each side, this should be the standard, and nothing else. Then, let's quickly go through the performances, though comparisons are hard here. The Surface Pro has a Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite, which is going to give you some performance, probably more than the RK3588 S chip that the Fight Tab features, or the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C of the Duet 5. However, the Minis Forum has an AMD Ryzen 7 8840U plus an AMD Radeon 780M graphics card, which makes it probably the fastest of the bunch, though it's also the most power hungry. Uh, more, more on that later. 
Though the chip that the Surface Pro features is also what mostly kills the device for me. Good luck running anything open source reli reliably on that thing. But like if you do manage, if you do manage, like tell me, I would be interested maybe. Of course, the killer feature of the Fi tab is that it's open source with publicly available firmware and schematics, plus support for many operating systems. It comes with PyDOS, as I've mentioned, but it also supports OpenFi if you want a, a developer and open source version of PyDOS, or you can spin up Android or any Linux distribution, or some Linux, more on this later. Pr uh, prices are also a factor to consider. Fight is currently running a great discount and you can get one for as little as, little as £47, keyboard and pen included, whereas the Surface Pro runs up to being more than four times as expensive. Yes, that thing is two grand, which is crazy. The Mini Sphero Room is somewhere in between, being just one grand, but also without the pen. And the Duet 5 is uh, discontinued. discontinued. Sorry, <laughs> but it's pretty cheap secondhand if you want one. I should also very briefly talk about the pens. I won't even begin to talk about the Surface Pen. I'm, I don't have one. <laughs> I'm not an artist and uh, I'm trying to learn, but still I'm not an artist yet. And you can find some very professional reviews specifically about the drawing experience on that type of device. I also haven't felt the need to buy the pen for the Minis Forum. However, I do have both the pen for the Fight Up Duo and the Duet 5. The writing experience on the latter was very painful, the Duet 5, due to badly written palm recognition, I think. It's either too weak or the pen will often stop working for a few seconds. I believe it's some sort of software bug on the Duet's part, but I was not able to fix it. Or maybe it's a faulty pen, but that's unlikely. Instead, the writing, writing experience on the Fight tab is just fine. The stylus has two customizable buttons near the tip. I still prefer to use ebooks such as the Pine Note for note taking, but this could nonetheless be a great option on the go. Thus, after all of these comparisons on hardware, which was strictly required to give you some context on how I think two-in-ones should be and what they currently are, I believe it's time to dig more into each device and talk more about what makes them unique software-wise, starting off with obviously the Fight tab. As I mentioned, it runs FidoS, which is Chrome OS with some tweaks. Firstly, you have some pre-installed FIDE ad applications. As an example, there's FidoS AI, which allows you to integrate OpenAI GPT models into the device. Let's talk about that though. If you hate AI, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying that the device, what the device features. In fact, if you really hate it, you can turn off this feature entirely in settings. Still, if you don't. There's a friendly Fox chatbot, chatbot that has some information about Fight and can point you to the forum and Discord communities and even bring up support threads from the forum if you mention having specific issues. That's nice. And then there's a generic just chat chatbot to do whatever you ask it to do. It's GPT-40 Mini. I asked it for a review of the Fight Tab because I'm lazy and GPT gave it a 5 star out of 5 review. However, the entire review is about a non-existent task management tool with tasks, deadlines and overall project progress. Well, yeah, no, apparently I still have to do my job manually. There's also FidoS community application, that's a web app to view the forum, and FidoS remote desktop, copyrighted to Fight Innovations and made with love by gentle souls around the globe. Note that you do need a FidoS account to use both the remote desktop and AI functionalities. However, this account is not mandatory to use the device and neither is a Google account, which is fine by me. Fight Innovations also added some extra settings, namely the ability to have a manual rotate screen button, a tablet laptop mode switch, and built-in wide dive for streaming protected premium content, since yes, DRMs are still a thing. Still, this allows you to access Google Play, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Spotify, and more. 
It's a bit hidden, but there's also a tool called FileDrop, which allows you to quickly share files with other devices on the same network. You access it by going to dropfidos.io. It only works when neither device is using a proxy tunnel or VPN. I discovered about this thanks to the well-maintained guide, FAQ and manual, something I rarely see for such devices. Fide also comes with an optional subscription. It's not particularly important to get it, the computer will run fine without it, but according to the documentation, you will not get access to system upgrades, work order and support tickets with SLA guarantee and commercial grade help desk. Upgrades and advanced user support, basically. The price is £15 a year, which is just slightly more than £1 every month. The justification for this choice is we are not interested in inserting ads or reselling your privacy. At the same time, we believe that donations are a less controllable and less than fair way of generating income. Truth be told, I can understand them, and the price for the subscription seems fair, though I'm still confused by whether I will be able to update this device without one, or whether this only applies to custom installs, installs of FIDRES, not the FIDRES tab. I did not see any pop-up at all asking me to subscribe within the Fight tab, and I was able to update the system without any issues, so it seems like this topic is handled, handled carefully by the developers. Though I'm a big desktop Linux fan and my main workstation is always going to be something running KD Plasma on some Linux distribution, I actually do think that Chrome OS or derivatives are a great option for secondary devices, let me explain. As much as I love desktop Linux, truth be told, there's still work left to do before we're able to provide a great tab tablet experience. On the Minis forum, I still often, myself, often find myself stuck in full screen applications or unable to pop up the virtual keyboard or something like that. We're getting there and the amount of touch features increases every update. I'm also doing some work on that, but it's not perfect. On the other hand, Chrome OS is incredibly flexible on this kind of devices. Not only does it have native Chrome OS applications, even some that are not just web applications, but it has also out-of-the-box support for Android apps. When in tablet mode, being able to have applications that were thought for touch-first tablet devices is great, and it provides consistency with the very same applications that I use on my phone. Though FidoS is a derivative of Chromium, Chromium OS, instead, I've always said Chrome OS, it's Chromium OS, I'm really sorry about that. And uh, even though it's a derivative of Chromium OS instead and does not come with Google services out of the box, there's a guide to set up the Google Play Store and get Android apps running. When instead you're in desktop mode, you can still download and run any Linux or Windows application. I've tried Inkscape, a professional vector graphic application, Xorno for handwriting notes and so on. They run as if they were native applications, though they take a little bit of time to open after a first boot, and they handle both the touchscreen and pen events without missing a bit. Even more examples. Raw pictures, editing with raw therapy, editing videos with Kedin Live, you're getting the full desktop features for any application. I have not tried the support for Windows application, even though it's there because I have dignity. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Thus, this form factor and operating system quickly turns out to be a Frankenstein type of monster that's able to seamlessly integrate both the most tablet-like applications and the most desktop-like ones, depending on what you need. Running both at the same time on a generic desktop environment design that's able to transfer well both to a keyboard and touch input. It's not the best of both. I still prefer to do my actual work on a Linux distribution, but it's a bit of both worlds. It's like the device itself. It's not going to be the best of uh, laptops and the best of laptops, la tablets, but it's, it's a bit of both. I like that. <laughs> of course, this whole section is not just about FidoS, though it does apply, but it's about Chrome OS in general. The Duet 5 also has an oper operating system and thus it supports the same features, though in a more locked OS way, which doesn't require a Google account that's not open source, differently from FidoS. Though uh, you don't have to like Chrome OS, as I mentioned, the FidoS Duo does support installing Linux on the device, 
However, I'm afraid to say I did not have, uh, have the time to try this out in the last month. Uh, as you can tell by the fact that uh, this video is the only one that I have pub published in months, I'm currently a bit overwhelmed by work and university and I never found the time to risk the stability of Chrome S to try to install Linux. It seems like no issues should come up, but tweaking with operating systems is always inherently a bit risky. Still, I promise to try it out as soon as I have some more spare time. So. Allow me to wrap this up by talking about the Minis Forum specifically now. Though it comes with Windows out of the box or without any operating system, it claims good Linux support, which is true. I was able to get Arch Linux running without any issue or, and most things work out of the box, not, not everything though. As an example, in tablet mode, the volume keys wouldn't work. This can be easily fixed by running a script and the volume is always 100%. This should also be fixable, and there's instruction on how to fix it, but I was unable to do so because I'm stupid. However, my biggest complaint with this device is battery life. I usually estimate that a full battery charge is going to last me around three hours of average usage, which is terrible. The Fight Tab lasts more than three times that, also, the Minis Forum drains a bit too much battery in standby and sometimes it turns on when I put it in the backpack instead of going to sleep, so it's completely dead as soon as I get to university. I tried setting up some battery life saving measures, but again, I'm dumb, <laughs> so I did not achieve that much out of it. And I just have accepted that I have traded battery life for great performances instead, and hey, it's just a matter of bringing a battery pack with me. I have survived for worse. Nonetheless, when I look at the device I have, the, more, the one that gives me more confidence in the future is the Fight Tab. Personally, I'd like to see a slightly more expensive device that provides the same good Linux support on a slightly higher hand device with a larger <coughs> OLED <coughs> screen and a faster chip. If that happens, I do see myself potentially using it as my main device thanks to the superior battery life and design. I would definitely be happier using such a device with a, by a company that visibly appreciates being open source rather than being stuck to hoping for a decent Linux support on other devices. Or maybe I'll switch to the Surface Pro, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Am I still recording? Is this working? Yes, 18 minutes. That's good. And the lighting is good as well. Nice.